Good evening. Let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mother, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, dear faithful, we begin a new series about spiritual life, and I will uh, take as a guide the um, work, synthetical work of Father Tanqueray. Jesuit, uh, I think it's a Jesuit. No, it's not a Jesuit. Um, it's a religious father. Um, SSDD, yes. Religious order. A Frenchman uh, who made a uh, Master's work, a synthetical work of all the writings of the Catholic Church about spiritual life. It's called a treatise on ascetical and mystical theology. So, um, to give you an idea what exists, on, uh, in spirituality, in the Catholic Church, we give, will give a short, and it will be long. Uh, it is short in this sense that we give only the names and short comments, but it will be long because there are, uh, anyway, uh, many uh, writers and teachers. We begin with... Um, Patristic age, <clears throat> the age of the fathers, the church fathers. During the age of the fathers, the elements of a theory of spiritual life come progressively to light and m- mature into a valuable body of teaching with the work of Cassian in the West and that of St. John Climacus in the East. Because before it was not a special uh, discipline. It was in sermons, it was in uh, explanations of the Holy Scripture, um, in morals. Um, but the moral theology um, included the spiritual life. And now the modern um, writers and authors are making a distinction. Uh, between uh, more morality, that is about sin, what is sin and what is not sin, and then spiritual life, that is what is perfection, <clears throat> what is holiness. Because to reach holiness, we ha- we need uh, a science. It is um, there are spiritual laws. Uh, you know already some laws, as uh, what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Um, uh, the one who elevates himself will be will be humiliated, and the one who humiliates himself will be elevated, Francis. And give, and you shall be given. Um, in the same, uh, uh, and we say, in our Father, forgive us our, our trespasses as we forgive uh, um, our. Uh, uh, forgive our sin as we forgive uh, our trespasses. So in the same um, measure that we forgive those who trespass against us, 
we will be uh, forgiven. Our trespasses will be forgiven in that's the same measure. So there are many spiritual laws. So you, you need a science to, to progress in, in, a, in a spiritual life. And that is the aim of our life. That is the, the reason why we exist on earth, to go to heaven. So it is finally the most important uh, knowledge. The first three centuries, we have um, Saint Clement of Rome, uh, a pope, of course. Uh, uh, Peter Linus Cletus, it is the third pope after Peter and Linus, who wrote an uh, epistle to the Corinthians with. Um, uh, spiritual uh, advices written in 95 to restore peace in the church of Corinth. You see, peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, said our Lord Jesus Christ. Then we have Hermas, who wrote The, the Shepherd, in 140, in which are described at length the conditions for true penance. The penance is very important. When you are not doing penance, you will perish all, said our Lord Jesus Christ. The penance is, uh, is uh, essential in spiritual life. Clement of Alexandri Alexandria, who wrote the instructor, Pedagogus, in Greek, written after uh, 195, describes the spiritual progress of a true Gnostic. The Gnostic is in the positive sense of the word, not in the, in the heretical sin, uh, sense of the word, but Gnostic in the Greek uh, signification means the, man, the one who is searching uh, after uh, knowledge. Gnostic. The best Greek text is that of uh, <laughs> Stalin. <laughs> Not Stalin, but Stalin. <laughs> uh, yes, because it, it, it has many editions. This writing, so called, because it is uh, the, 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 the second century. Then you have uh, Saint uh, Cyprian of Carthago. The Habitu Virginum, about the, uh, the virtues of the Virgin. The Dominica Oratione, an explanation about the, the Our Father, the prayer. The Opere et Illimosinis, about the good works and uh, the gifts. Um, the Bono Patientiae about the goods of the patients, the zelo et libore, about the zeal, the lapsis, about the apostates, because they were apostates, but what to do with apostate people when they want to come back to the church. Then, so there are a few writings in the first centuries because of the persecution um, the church had no much possibility to uh, develop, to edit books. Uh, in that time, it was papyrus and it um, was very costly also and difficult. Um, so there are few writings. And then we, are, uh, we make a a jump to the 4th and the 7th century, from the 4th to the 7th century. In the West, in the West, the Catholic Church, we have since Ambrose, the Church Father of Milan, 4th century, the Officius Ministorum, about the, the office of the, uh, the ministers of the liturgy, 
De virginibus about the um, virgins. De viduis about the widows. Because the widows also have a rule of uh, spirituality. St. Paul said they, they must pray much because they are without help and God will help them and they have to do good works because they have no care anymore about a uh, man and um, family. De virginitate, about the virginity. St. Augustine, the, the, the greatest, the greatest uh, church father, his uh, confessions, fourth century, fifth, beginning of the fifth century, soliloquia, monologues, the doctrina cristiana about the Christian doctrine, the civitate dei about the the city of God, where he describes that there are uh, two cities in the history of mankind: the city of God and the city of the devil, and they are. Um, in continual war until it will end in heaven and uh, hell. Epistola, many uh, letters, uh, 211 letters. St. Augustine's work contains the elements of a complete theology of ascetism and mysticism. His teaching supplements and corrects that of Cassian, Cassianus. Cassianus um, <clears throat> is the first one who, who made a systematic um, overview about spiritual life in the West. For an exposition of it, uh, we have many um, authors who, are, who wrote about that. Uh, for instance, Purat. Hmm? The Latin text of the works listed uh, above is found in the Patriarchia Latina. It's a work with all the, the writings of the Church Fathers. Then we have uh, Cassian, uh, we were speaking about already. 360, he lived 360 to 435 in his collaciones, his conferences. And then the Institutis Cenobiorum. Uh, the Octo Principe uh, Pallium Viciorum Remedies Libri uh, About the uh, institution, about to organize Cenobiorum uh, um, means uh, religious people, monks who live together in community. And then about the eight princip principal um, the eight remedies of the uh, uh, against the principal vices, principal vices. We are speaking about uh, seven vices, but he, uh, he, he is speaking about uh, he, he found the eight. He's speaking about the eight vices, main vices, like pride, uh, uh, eager. Um, Gluttony and, and so on. So the um, the remedies about, uh, against those vices, and then about the incarnation of our Lord against uh, the heresy of Nestorius. <clears throat> so his most important work is are the Collationes. Uh, Twenty conferences. So that is uh, fundamental. The first uh, really manual, systematic manual um, that is. And then we heard about, uh, we spoke about uh, St. August Augustine, um, where we can find in his works a complete theology, but uh, 
not put together in one work, but all over his work, all, all over all his works. Then we have Leo, Saint Leo the first, Pope, uh, Leo the Great, in his sermones, uh, spiritual, uh, spiritual um, sermons. The discourses of Saint Leo for the principal feasts of the year are full of piety. The church has borrowed from them for her liturgy, even. Uh, for instance, in the lectures of the uh, uh, the morning prayers, the Madutina. Ninety-six of the sermons uh, current under his name are genuine. Yes. That we we uh, uh, we found out that is that we we proved that is genuine. Then we have a um, very important uh, and known person, Saint Benedict of Nursia, end of the fifth century, beginning of the sixth. His rule brought from sixty-six to seventy-three chapters in its second edition has become that of almost all the monks. In, in the West, from the 8th to the 13th century. So St. Augustine organized the spirituality of the priests uh, who came together, the, 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 canon, the, canon, the, the canons, yeah, called the canons. And, uh, and the monks were, were uh, instructed by St. Benedict. It means layman who wants to live according to um, the two, three uh, advices of our Lord Jesus Christ and a uh, rule and uh, superior. So in a, uh, in a monastery or in a convent, in an abbey. It can be uh, easily adapted to the conditions of any country and time. And this is the key to its great success. So until now, when um, somebody wants to begin a spiritual life, uh, when he is a priest, he is rather following St. Augustine, when he is a layman, he is uh, following rather St. Benedict. The text of the Regula is available um, in uh, yeah, in Patologia Latina, of course, uh, there are many editions, many, many editions, because it's so important. And all these Benedict's uh, monasteries uh, have their uh, uh, books for every monk. And um, certainly when the press began to develop, during the ages. Then we have St. Gregory the First, the great Pope, Gregory the Great, sixth century, Expositio in Librum Job. So the explanation of the book of the Holy Scripture, Job. Uh, Job was an, um, an holy person, very holy person in the Old Testament. Um, who had men, uh, much to suffer and suffered with patience and with many virtues. Sive moralium libri. So it are this exposition of the book of Job are um, finally thirty five books about morals. And then we have liber regule pastoralis curi. Yes, that is for priests uh, who have a cure about uh, of souls, uh, a book with uh, the rules of the um, care of the souls. A dialogorum libri uh, for four books with the dialogues. Yes. So in the East, we had in those first centuries Saint Athanasius, 
the third, fourth, and fourth century, who wrote the life of Saint Anthony, Anthony the, the Desert Father. This book gives an account of the spiritual doctrine of the great organizer of the Egyptian monasticism, Saint Anthony. Um, was represented with a with a pork because he uh, he lives with a he lived with a pork or another version says the explanation says that the devil appeared to him in the form of a pork anyway he was a master and uh, instructed many disciples in spirituality in the desert of Egypt. Then we have since Cyril of Jerusalem, fourth century. In his catechetical lectures, uh, uh, he portrays the life of a true Christian. There's not merely catechism, but spiritual life. And here, uh, roads, the messages, and other sacramental lectures. Five catechises on the sacraments. <clears throat> How to take much profits to spiritual life of sacraments. We have then Saint Basil the Great, also fourth century. He describes in his book on the Holy Ghost the work things of the Holy Spirit in a reg regenerated soul, so a soul that has been um, baptized. And in his two works on the rules of monastic life, the fundamentals of ascetism. So what is St. Benedict for the West, St. Basil is it for the East? The 55 longer rules, rules at length, they are called rules at length in Greek, horoi, kata, platos, set forth the principles. Then the 313 shorter rules, rules in abridgment, horoi, kat, epitomen, in Greek, their application um, to the daily life of a monk. Daily life of a monk. So very specific, um, advices. These rules were universally received in the East and have survived to this day in the Greek Church. We have uh, Basilian uh, sisters, Basilian monks, all over uh, the Eastern Catholic world, and even in the schismatic uh, Eastern world. The best edition of the works of St. Basil is still that of Maurice Garnier. Yes, it's very interesting to read about this because it's uh, uh, as interesting as um, St. Benedict and St. Augustine. Then we have St. John Chrysostomos. It is the greatest church father in the Easter Catholic Church, St. John Chrysostom, 4th, 5th century, has left in his homilies a vast storehouse of materials on both ethics and ascetics and in his tract on the priesthood a stirring praise of the uh, sacerdotal dignity so ethics is about what is good and what is evil ascetics is what is the way to get rid of uh, evil in us practically to um, develop uh, the first uh, stage of sp uh, spiritual life. Then we have Saint uh, um, Cyril of Alexandria. We, are, we saw Saint Cyril of Jerusalem, but this is another Cyril of Alexandria, the 5th century, with his book of 
treatise on the holy and consubstantial trinity consubstantial that is the word that was used against the heresy uh, of the of arius his chief work on the subject studies the relations of the soul to the holy trinity to god but uh, the three persons then we have the pseudo uh, the dionysius areopagita about the year 500 on the divine names this is a masterly work that was even used by saint thomas aquinas the divine names it means the divine properties is uh, all might is omniscience his holiness his justice his goodness and so on the divine names then the ecclesiastical hierarchy and the mystical and then the mystical theology simply those works um, influenced considerably later writers on the subjects the best completed uh, edition of the works is that of uh, cordier in antwerp 17th century Dionysius Areopagita. It means uh, Dionysius that St. Paul converted on the Areopage in uh, Athens. It was a disciple. Uh, the first Dionysius. This, this is not the uh, Dionysius Areopagita that, uh, that uh, St. Paul converted because it was in the first century. And this is the fifth century. Therefore, he is called the pseudo uh, Dionysius Areopagita. It means a writer who took the name of the first one, but was not the one who met the Saint Paul. Then we have Saint John Climacus. So that is the spiritual writer by excellence of the East. What was Cassianus in the West? Climacus is it in the east, St. John Climacus, with this ladder to paradise. So, <laughs> ladder to paradise. It's obvious that it is a spiritual work. It reprints the, um, the first edition of the famous work by um, in the, Patro, in the Patrologia Greca, so in, the, in, in this uh, compilation of the Greek Church Fathers, we can find this work, um, and it was retaken by Rader in Paris in the 17th century. So it's a very interesting work, St. John Climacus, in systematical exposition of spiritual life uh, for the Easter uh, church in uh, of course in Greek but it has been translated of course then we have Saint Maximus confessor the confessor in the 7th century also known as the theologian or Maximus of Constantinople developed the teaching of pseudo Dionysius on contemplation but drew greater lights on the part played in spirit spiritual life by the sacred humanity of our savior, our leader and model. Very important to act, to concentrate on our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the way, and the example, the model, the, the only uh, way, the only mean to go to heaven. Without me, you can do nothing, said our Lord. His scholia on Dionysius uh, were reprinted um, in Venice. So it came, of course, uh, in the in the West. Um, translated, all those books were, as you understand, uh, originally in Greek. Then we come in the Middle Ages. 
In Milesius, we have the Benedictine school, um, among other schools. So it's a concentration on a, a great uh, uh, author and developing of his of his uh, doctrine. In the Abbey of Beck in Normandy, we have Saint Anselm, the 11th century, who became the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1089. One of the most attractive writers in the Middle Ages, Saint Anselm. His meditations and prayers are full of unction and doctrine. Liber meditationum et rationum. So, you see, uh, it's interesting to see all these authors to understand that there exist many, many thousands, uh, if not uh, millions of pages uh, written by great uh, personalities and, and saints. Saints. So we have we have no need to to to, to read the second hand and uh, write, uh, writings of uh, lower quality or of uh, uh, suspect uh, uh, apparitions. When you read the writings of saints, you uh, you are venerating them, so you become even their help and their graces. In the Abbey of Citeaux in France, you have Saint Bernard of Clairvaux, the last church father, uh, 12th century, whose lofty piety and practical knowledge have deeply influenced the Middle Ages. Uh, it, developed, it, it was the first to develop uh, a mariology, and a theology about Mary, our lady, best lady Mary. Sermones de tempore, uh, sermons about uh, uh, liturgical times, about the saints, uh, about the explanation of the Cantica Canticorum, mm. um, the chant of uh, Solomon in the Holy Scripture. De Consideratione, about the meditation, Tactus de Gradius et Humilitatis et Superbia. Ah, a treatise about the gradations, the, um, the steps of humility and pride. In the monastery of Rupertsberg, near Bingen in Germany, we have St. Hildegard. Abbess, 12th century, whose voluminous works are in need of further criticism. Her revelations very special because she was not a theologian, but she had this by revelation entitled Shivias, is to say, Shire Vias Domini Vel Lucis, Shivias, uh, uh, to know the, the ways of the Lord uh, or the light. Her Liber Divinorum Operum Simplicis Ominis, uh -huh. the book about the um, divine works for man, God's work for man, the creation, providence, redemption, glorification is for man. It's God who cares about man. Her Liber Vitae Meritorum. Uh, means the book about the life of merits. In the monastery of Hefta, or Helpede, near Eisleben in Saxony, also, also Germany, you have seen Gertrude the Great, great, 14th century, a simple nun, but not to be confused with the Abbess Gertrude von Hackeborn, the herald of divine love. love. Uh, the German original of the work is lost, 
There remains in its Latin version, first printed by the Cartesian John van Lans per Col uh, Cologne. No. Um, she wrote Legatus Divine Pietatis. So the legacy of the divine Pisces. Pisces. Um, this edition is of the Benedictines of Solen in Revelation Zirudiane et Mechtidiane, the Revelations of Saint Gertrude and Mechtilde. Also, we have uh, the love of the secret heart, illustrated by Saint Gertrude, the exercise of Saint Gertrude, the heart of Saint Gertrude, and so on. She wrote many spiritual works. Then we have effectively we have Saint Mechtilde, Matilda von Heckeborn Wipa, also in Germany, a sister of the Abbess Gertrude von Heckeborn and the teacher of, of St. Gertrude the Great. She wrote the Book of Spiritual Grace and shows the same concept of spiritual life and the same devotion to the Secret Heart as her disciple, who took down unknown to her at first the revelations consigned in his book. The original German, Das Buch Geistliche Gnade, was first printed at Leipzig, and so, and there was a Latin version in Würzburg, and so on. <clears throat> Mechtilda, um, about the grace. Then we have another Mechtilda, not von Hackerborn, but von Magdeburg, Saint Mechtilda of Magdeburg. At first, the begin, the begin, in her native town, later a nun at Hefta. Uh, in the monastery of Hefta, with Saint Gertrude the Great, where she died in 1280. She wrote down her revelations in Low German. There's a, a dialect uh, in the north of uh, Germany. They were translated into High German, it's in South German, then into Latin as Sororis Mechtildis Lux Divinitatis Fluvens in Coda Viritatis, entitled the, the Light of the Divine Sister Mechtild. Um, that uh, emerge in the heart of truth. And I found in the revelations Gertrudiane et Matilda, in the same work that we are sp speaking about when we spoke about Gertrude, because this book is speaking about both saints. Then we have the divine light flowing into hearts without uh, gill. Is marked, this, this work is marked by the same characteristics as the revelations of the preceding saints. The love of the secret heart, you see, there is a devotion of the secret heart um, developed by those saints. Then we have in the monastery of Vatstena in Sweden, in the 14th century, so that is uh, one century later, uh, the Master of Vatstena is a mother house of the order of Saint Savior of Bridgetons, founded by her since Saint Bridget, 14th century, whose revelations describe with great realism the life and particularly the passion of the Christ. These revelations translated freely from the Swedish into Latin 
were printed at Lubeck in 15th century. Um, it's very interesting uh, because the passion of the Lord Jesus Christ is a source of spiritual life, of course, and of grace. So after this Benedictine school, we have another school, the school of Saint, Saint Victor. Uh, the school is of mysticism, which developed among the Augustinian canons of the Abbey of St. Victor near Paris, made most correct use of Platonism, of the philosophy of Plato, the Greek philosopher. So we have Hugh of St. Victor, 12th century. Um, Hugh of St. Victor, the most influential theologian of the 12th century, who described the progressive steps of the soul in the way to contemplation in his chief work, De Sacramentis Christiane Fidei, about the sacraments or the, the holy things, the holy doctrine uh, of Christian faith, or the mysteries of Christian faith. Sacramentis uh, means in this context uh, the mysteries. Among his other spiritual treaties, it must be mentioned the Vanitate Mundi about the vanity of the of the world, Soliloquium de Ara Anime, Monologues uh, of the Soul, De Laude Caritatis about the uh, the excellence of the charity. The Amore Sponsia Sponsa, about the love of the um, the beloved, the lover to the beloved. It is spiritual love, of course. De Meditando, about meditation, how to meditate. So, a very important uh, step in spiritual, spirituality, most influential theologian, Hugh of Saint, Hugh of Saint Victor. Then we have Richard of Saint Victor, 12th century, Benjamin Minor, Sur di Anime Preparazione ad Contemplazione. So the, about the preparation of the soul to contemplation. <clears throat> And then Benjamin Mayor, the Grazie Contemplations, about the grace of the contemplation, not the preparation, but the contemplation itself. So, how to contemplate? Then we have Adam of Saint Victor, the most important liturg liturgical poet in the Middle Ages, with sequencia. Uh, the liturgical poetry of Adam of Saint Victor was uh, the English translation. And then we have a third school, the Dominican school. The Dominican school uh, unites liturgical prayer and contemplation with the ministry of preaching, according to the maxim of its founder, contemplari et contemplata agi stadri. So contemplate and um, trans transmit the the contemplated uh, doctrine and uh, and sides, insights to others. The founder was Saint Dominic, 13th century. Um, he patterns his constitutions after those of the Premonstratensian canons. And of course, Saint Augustine. His rule, uh, his rule for priests, so inspired by Saint Augustine and the Primans Stratensians. Then we have in his uh, school Saint Albertus Magnus, Albertus the Great, the 13th century, for a time Bishop of Ratisbon, 
no less zealous for piety than for scientific and theological studies, has left many writings touching uh, this upon spiritual life. The comments about uh, Dionysus the Areopagita, uh, four books with um, sentences, Quattro Libro Sentenciarum, Summa Theologica, he makes a summary of theology, the Sacrificio, sacrificio Misse, about the sacrifice of mission. So in all these writings, um, is there, um, are there um, many uh, instructions about spirituality? Then we have seen Thomas Aquinas himself, the angelical doctor, the greatest uh, theologian uh, of the church, 13th century, has treated excellently all of the important questions of ascetism and mysticism in various parts of his works, but more especially in his Summa Theologica and Expositio Omnium Epistolarum Divini Pauli. So the, the Summa Theologica is, uh, is, is the, the expo exposition of the explanation of the theology. Then Expositio is explanation uh, Omnium of all the epistles, the writings, the letters of Saint Paul. Then explanation comments about Canticum Canticorum, the, the chant of Saint um, Solomon, of um, the, the Saint the, the Scripture, uh, writing by Solomon. In Evangelia, explanation of the Gospels. De perfection vita spiritualis, about the perfection of the spiritual life, and officium de corpore Christi, about the office, um, um, the office about the, uh, the the corpse, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he prepared in the 13th century for Pope Urban the Fourth. The office. Uh, the mass and the bravery of the of the um, Corpus Christi. So there are many translations during the centuries, of course, because he's a master. Then we have Saint Vincent Ferrer. 15th century, about spiritual life, a true masterpiece, a great favorite, a fa uh, favorite with Saint Vincent de Paul. This little treatise was first printed at Magdeburg in the 15th century. Saint Vincent Ferrerius, uh, a great saint who uh, traveled all through Europe preaching. Then you have the same time, same century, 14th century, Saint Catherine of Siena with a dialogue, exalts particularly the goodness of God who has created us, sanctifies us, and shows us his mercy even in the punishments he sends. Dialogues. A very um, interesting and uh, Captivating, mind captivating saints. Then you have another school, the same time, the same century, the, the third century, the Franciscan school, faithful to the spirit of its founder, Saint Francis of Assisi, marked by preference for affective spirituality, love of the cross, and absolute poverty. So Saint Francis wrote Opuscula, those uh, little writings. Uh, uh, the Speculum Perfectionis of Leo of, of Assisi about the, the mirror of perfection of the Lion of Assisi 
that was a, a book written about his life. Um, so St. Francis wrote very few, but there were many writings about him and about his spirituality. Very interesting, very high. Um, and um, it's very useful. Uh, the most known of his writing are the little flowers of St. Francis of Assisi. The little flowers. Then we have um, his disciple, Saint Bonaventura, 13th century, um, has devoted a comparatively small part of his writing to mystical and ascetical theology. The main editions of these uh, complete works are super. Um, are uh, given by the critical edition of the Friars Manor in the 19th century. Vitis Mystica, um, Linium Vitae, Soloquium, so many writings, as uh, there's, there's a monologues, the, the tree of the, of the life, and uh, The fruit tree of mystical fruit tree about the perfection of life, about the threefold life. It means in spiritual life there are three phases: the purificative phase, the eliminative phase, and the uniting phase. Then we have the blessed Angela of Foligno. 14th century, this Umbrian penitent and mystical writer uh, sets forth specially God's transcendence and Christ's sufferings in the book of visions and instructions. We have Saint Catherine of Bologna, abbess of the poor class of Bologna, an experienced master of the spiritual combat, has left in her treatise of the seven spiritual weapons. Um, written in Italian in the 15th century, translated into Latin uh, later. Then we have the German school of mystics. Uh, she, it is in depth for its theology to the theories of pseudo Dionysius and to Neoplatonism. You have John Eckert, Dominican in the 14th century, generally known, generally known as Master uh, Eckert, may be considered as his founder. His last years were clouded by the accusation of heresy uh, brought against him by the Archbishop of Cologne. Two years after his death, 28 propositions drawn from his writing were condemned by Pope John XXII. This has interfered with the uh, preservation of his works and renders it difficult now to form a correct estimate of his teachings. His sermons in German were edited by Kachler and so So it is a very high uh, spirituality, but um, there were some um, unhappy expressions that could make him uh, a giving an, an heresy, or, but he, it was rather, we, we understand what he wants to say, but he says it in, an, um, in a wrong way. So, uh, uh, for instance, the, the love of God, love unites, and the love can be so strong that we have the impression that we are one with God. And when we are one with God, we are God. So, but uh, to say we are God, it is... Um, it sounds uh, uh, bad, um, but we understand what he wants to say. Uh, we are children of God, and children of God. Uh, uh, Jesus, of Lord Jesus Christ himself said that we are gods, with, uh, we are God in some way. 
mitzvah even in the gospel, you will be gods. But in means it's children of God. Uh, and um, because his, his love with Jesus was so strong that he had the impression to be one with him, totally one. So it's 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 heresies are so it's heresy, it means it's uh, unhappy expressions are in that way. But it doesn't um, it doesn't uh, impeach uh, that he is a very important uh, and very deep uh, mystic, uh, mystical, mystic, and that his um, his writing are his writing are very uh, very useful in that he founded a, a spiritual school. So we have his disciple John Towler. 14th century, also Dominican, one of the greatest preachers and mystics of the Middle Ages. See, the disciple of John Eckhart Tolle was the, one of the greatest mysticals of the Middle Ages, often called Dr. Sublimis, the sublime doctor, or Dr. Illuminatus, the, the illuminated doctor of the church. He has lived sermons which rank among the finest monuments in the German language. There. So he wrote the inner way, uh, 26 sermons for festivals by John Toller. Yeah. Then we have the blessed Henry Suzo, also called Amandus, a name adopted in his writings, 14th century. His works were edited by Fabry, uh, that's bookline there, Ewigen Weisheit. The little book of the eternal wisdom. Suzo is a very uh, striking uh, uh, spiritual. Um, was very zealous, very interesting personality. It was interesting to to write to to read his life, the life of the best Henry Suzo written by himself, so bi biography. Then we have Blessing John Rysbroek, Jan van Rysbroek. Um, he was of uh, Rysbroek in the south of Brussels, one of the greatest mystics. He was the greatest mystic of all before uh, St. John of the Cross. Um, he had the reputation to be for spirituality, what is St. Thomas Aquinas for theology. He was surnamed Dr. Ecstaticus, the doctor, um, the excellent doctor, 14th century. Despite the precision with which he was able to express the profoundest thoughts, Thus, his language is, is frequently obscure because it is, of course, it is going about high uh, mystical situations that many people don't know, never experienced. Through digressions, repetitions, and subtle divisions, his works were translated and so forth by the Carthusians in Cologne. Uh, so we have the works of Sir Johan Rosbrook, six volumes, The Mirror of the Eternal Salvation, The Blessed Sacrament, The Book of the Enclosures, The Seven Degrees of the Ladder of Spiritual Love, The Kingdom of the Lovers of God, The Adornment of the Spiritual Marriage, Reflections from the Mirror of a Mystic, Being Gleanings from the Works of Rosbrook. Then we have the Flemish school. It's closely connected with the German school, but leaves aside pure speculation to concentrate on practical mysticism. Mysticism in the, in the low countries is chiefly represented by the Brethren of the Common Life and the Canon Segular of Windesheim. Among them we may mention Gerard Groot, 14th century, called Gerardus Magnus, the founder of the Brethren of the Common Life, his activity was predominantly pastoral. 
is complete list of his of writings, some still unpublished, is given by Bonne Mori Gerard Herat de Grotto. Then we have Florentius Radovans, Florence Radovans, 14th century, the head of the Committee of the Brethren of the Common Life, after the death of the Grotto, left but few writings, which were collected by his disciples, Herat de Zutphen and Thomas Akempis. His principal work is Tractatulus Devotus de Extirpitatione Viciorum, a small, um, a devote, a devote a treatise about extirpation of vices and the acquisition of and the acquisition of the uh, of real virtues. Then we have Gerard of Zutphen or the Zerbold from Zutphen. Van Zutphen. In the 14th century, Zutphen is a city near, a small city near Eindhoven. Also a member of the community of the Brethren of the Common Life, left among other writings some of disputed authorship, two works which established his fame, De Reformatione Anime, about the reform of the soul, De Spiritualibus Ascensionibus, about the spiritual ascensions, elevations. His earliest life is by uh, written by Thomas Akempis, founders of the new devotion. And then you have Gerlach Petersen or Petersen or Peters, 15th century, a scholar of Radovans and a canon regular at Windesheim, presents great similarity to the doctrine of the imitation of Christ. It is various writings. The principle of which is the ignitium from Deus Lolocum about the ignition uh, with the monologue to God. Ours with the mystics, the theory soliloquy with God. And then we have Thomas Hemerken Akempis, very known. He wrote the most important, most uh, read book in religion after the Bible, The Imitation of Christ, Thomas Hemerken Akempis. Owes a sermon Akempis um, to his birthplace, Kempen. Uh, after studying under the Brethren of the Common Life at Deventer, he became an Augustian at Mount St. Agnes Zwolle, near Amsterdam. His writings are all of, uh, of a devotional character and include tracts, meditations, sermons, letters, the life of St. Lidwin, and bi biographies of Groot, Radewens, and nine uh, other brethren of the common life. But his most known work is Imitation of Christ, of course. Uh, it has also some dissertion on the life, the, uh, life of and uh, life and writings. Alphabet of a scholar in the school of Christ, Garden of Roses and the Valley of Lilies. The little follower of Jesus. Meditations on the incarnation of Christ. Meditations on the life of Christ. Meditations on the passion and resurrection of our Lord. Prayers and meditation on the life of Christ. Acceptable time, daily readings of for Lent. Hmm. Babe of Bethlehem, daily readings for Advent. Thoughts on Holy Week. St. Litvin of Skidam. Many, many works. And then we have uh, the imitation of Christ. Uh, was uh, first issued anonymously about the 15th century, 1418, is ascribed to Thomas Akempis by great numbers of critics, although it would appear that this authorship is not fully settled, but is considered to be the writer. For a sketch of the history of the fascinating controversy, uh, you can see Wedley's story of the imitation of Christ. Then we have John Moburn, or, or Mombard, abbot of the Augustinian monastery of Livry, 
treats of the principal questions of ascetical theology and in particular of the various methods of meditation in his Rosetum Spirituale. I think um, we have to stop here after one hour. We will continue next time. Are there some questions? Flemish school connected with the which school? The Flemish school. It's connected with the uh, Primo Yes. Uh, Primo Stantense. Uh, and by the Primo Stantense. Uh, uh, yes, because uh, it's were anyway, because there are priests, uh, Ruzburg was a priest. And uh, it was all connected with the school. Um, uh, it is, of course, they were inspired by the uh, Augustinian uh, spirituality. Mm -hmm. I will take it back here. Um, they were in, they were connected and inspired by the German school. Hmm. But for their concrete rule, of course, they is part of the Augustinian rule. And it's possible that they also uh, saw with the Primus Atensis, because the Atensians, because they, they are Augustinians. But they are, uh, finally, they are in their concrete life uh, an Augustinian rule but they are connected they are similar to the German school in uh, spirituality the school of uh, Eckhart who is not an heretic <laughs> uh, he has some it is very unhappy that uh, he has uh, some condemnation of uh, his uh, expression because his expressions were too, too strong without distinction. He had to say, it is as if I am one with God. That's better to say than not, I am one with God. Uh, the love is uniting and you can, the love can be so strong that you are one, with, that God is one with you, you are one with God. Of course, love unites and strong love unites very strongly. So he had to say, it I have the impression that I'm one with God, but I know that I'm still a man. But uh, one with God, to say it means to say by the love uh, assumed in God. So, so he's still considered as a, a great mystic. Um, nevertheless, some expressions that are condemned. Not a real heretic, and he accepted also the criticism of the of his superiors. Not, is, is, to be not as Luther who, 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 uh, who was stubborn, not uh, and, and must really uh, deviating. Um, John Rusbuck was in relation, of course, was in relation to the Flemish school, right? and some are putting him in the Flemish school to get all together. Another question? Uh, of Basil the Great. Was the great, yes. Was uh, as important as uh, Benedict for the Western Church. Yes, yes. So, but uh, it's little known in the West. Of course, because he's so this. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, Perhaps uh, Benedict uh, is not uh, very known in the East. Neither. Yes, like Thomas Aquinas is also less known. Yes, in the East. Thomas Aquinas is not uh, studied in the in the East. And that is it is a pity because it is uh, the highest theology. They are still studying their own church fathers, mm -hmm. Eastern church fathers, yes. Mm -hmm. And the um, patron saints of Eastern Europe are Cyril and, Cyril and Method. Yes. But uh, in fact, it should be maybe also a little bit uh, St. Dadel, like St. Benedict is in the West. Uh, 
Since Cyril and Method are were not in especially spiritual writers. Huh? No, 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 no. But they are patrons of the patrons, yes. Europe. Because they converted yes. uh, uh, many nations in the yes. in the East. But Saint Benedict is patron saint of the western part of Europe. So maybe Saint Basil should be of Eastern Europe because of this. That Benedict is the patron of the Western? Yes. Europe. Yeah, but it's proclaimed after the council. Uh, <laughs> it has been proclaimed after the council. No, I think just before. By, by Paul the Sixth, but before the. Ah, this it's the possible, state. yes. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, uh, we can accept that St. Uh, Benedict is, the, is, is one of the founders of uh, Christian, uh, yes. uh, Christian Europe. Yes. There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, next time we will continue with the Cartesian school. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee, blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death, Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost, Amen. It will be on YouTube, and you can um, invite other uh, persons uh, who can be interested by this, and it can be important for souls to, uh, to um, think about the spiritual life. Uh, so you can um, do an apostolate by sharing the link of the um, of this conference. It is at my uh, YouTube channel called Sacerdos Eric Jacquemin, Catholicism Sede Vacante. Sacerdos Eric Jacquemin, God bless.